Um, hi, Lana. Thank you so much for helping my project. Um, could you say a little bit about yourself? Hello, Nathan. First of all, I would like to tell you how grateful I am for such an opportunity. Uh, as a chemical engineering student studying in Jordan, I'm a third year chemical engineering student. I have uh, interest in nanotechnology and renewable energy and in the space industry, of course, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Uh, I'm more than interested in space industry and all the future. And I think that space industry is a promising field for all humanity. And that's what I believe in. Um, what got you into science to begin with? I'm sorry? Oh, um, what got you interested in chemical engineering? What got me interested in chemical engineering? Uh, being a nerd. <laughs> Uh, first of all, in school, I'm good at math. I'm an excellent student, A plus student in math and physics. And after school, I, 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 uh, I realized how interested I am in science, but at the same time in the application of science. So I made my research about engineering and what kind of, what field of engineering combines most engineering and science together. And I found chemical engineering where science can be applied into biotechnology, nanotechnology, space industry, mechanical design, jet and propulsion, rocket propulsion. A lot of fields can be uh, considered as a part of chemical engineering. So to be honest, yeah, 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 that's why chemical engineering, because it's the field where science and engineering can be combined together. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I mean, as you were talking, I was like thinking like, all the materials we have around us, we yeah. need to, to figure out how to make them. And uh, I mean, literally everything. So. Yeah, and there's a term for chemical engineer when, when I was in, on high, in high school and they call it, uh, if, if God would be an engineer, he would be a chemical engineer. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so you said you you uh, got into science because you're a nerd. Um, how do we get more nerds? How do you get no more? It's, it's, it's simple, actually. To depend on the first important thing that God has given to humanity and what actually distinguishes human from other creatures, curiosity. I think at the point where education and the whole journey of how you learn as a human being, get to norm, normal information are accessible. Okay, that's a, something you have to be grateful for. But at the same time, it kills the, it kills that thing, the curiosity of the humanity. Children are no longer curious of how things work, why they work this way. They are not asking questions. They have answers for a question they have not even asked yet for. For me, I have asked a question. I have Googled the question I've asked. I have got, I have went to library several times, buying several books and trying, trying to answer the questions that I have asked myself. And that, that, that process itself, I think that's what's called learning. <laughs> cool can give you answers, yeah, but as I've said, they are answering questions that we have not even asked yet. But we, you learn when you ask the question yourself, because that actually shows that you have an interest in that, that you have thought about this before. So yeah, we can get more nerdy when we can, uh, how would say it, probably emphasize the curiosity of humanity in children. So what, instead of giving people Newton law, uh, ask them without using resources. I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting one with. Without using these, sorry, excuse me, without using resources uh, to ask children to go to go to find their answers themselves, like ask and ask a kiddo what made an apple fall down, without telling telling them to research it, let them think, let them use their curiosity and their mind themselves. So yeah, that's my answer. So instead of having uh, the teacher uh, describe something or talk mm -hmm. about some, have them just start off with a question. Yeah. And then let the kids explore. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it will not be, a, 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 to be honest, it will not be the correct answer, but it will give the children the sense of critical thinking. And that's required skill for learning for and for being someone productive in the education in general. <laughs> Um, how constraining do you think it is uh, that our classes take up a specific amount of time? Does, does that kind of 
reduce our ability to have curiosity or, um, you know, it, it seems like, you know, if you're going to teach, like, say, math in, you know, 12 weeks and you only get an hour a day for five days a week, uh, you know, I'd, I mean, I guess they have the time between classes to also explore their answers yeah. as well. Yeah, that's what I think about. Like, uh, it could be the same way we're education journey right now, classes and teachers and the school system itself, it's fine. But we have to improve that by adding that sessions or whatever it is to try to develop the curiosity for it itself on the side. I think that's great. And you know, kids are curious from the very beginning and they're told, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, we kill that. <laughs> yes, we kill it. We, we had it to begin with, we kill it, and then we wonder why it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, even when, like, your 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 old, uh, your young sister or brother or a kid, if you have a kid, they ask you a question, you start giving further answers and more details before they even ask for it. Like, let them think, let them go through the process of thinking itself. Yeah. So I think uh, that that's important. I, that makes 100% sense to me. I think you're right. Thanks. Um, well, I wanted to ask you a few questions about the moon. Um, did you know that NASA is planning to send astronauts back to the moon again? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been excited since I've heard about the mission. Um, how did you find out about it? Do you remember when and how? Uh, I think it was an Instagram post. Yeah, it was an Instagram post. And first, I was like, uh, what kind of mission are you talking about? Then I read more. I was like, is it Apollo again? <laughs> that was my first impression, to be honest. And I, I was super excited because for someone who's interested in space industry and has been reading about Apollo and what how great Apollo was to, again, satisfy it, it. Apollo gave humanity the satisfaction of space industry curiosity. People were curious about space. They went out for Apollo, amazing results, amazing achievement. But then there's no another, or there's no further try. There's no further next step. So yeah, Mars and moon and let's, I, I think Mars is the final destination. I, I love that. <laughs> so yeah, Mars is our new goal and our new challenge for that. So yeah, I, I, it was like, it's Apollo, but for my generation, <laughs> The Artemis generation. Yeah, the Artemis generation. <laughs> exactly. Um, I go up to people at coffee shops, at the stores, um, at the mm. airport, and I ask them this question. And most of the people have no idea that we're going back to the moon. I was wondering if that surprises you. Seriously, they don't? Yeah, only about maybe one out of five people know. I'm sorry for them. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. Probably, uh, like currently, I'm living in Jordan, and if I would do the same experience, yes, probably out of twenty or twenty-five, for one person would know that there's a mission called Artemis, and we're going back to the moon, and all of that. Um, again, I guess because of, because people, if you'd make a survey, and how many people are interested in space industry. Yeah, not a lot of people are interested in space industry. And not a lot of people are aware of how space industry is important. It's not just like Star Wars and stuff. No, it's important for maintaining a sustainability for our Earth and our planet and for our living here on Earth as a human being. So yeah, I guess it's it, uh, they don't know because there is uh, there's lack of knowledge and teaching about the importance of space industry in our century. Hmm. Um, I'd like, if you were trying to tell somebody why it's important, what would you, what would you tell them? Why it's important of what? Oh, um, how would you explain to somebody why the space industry is important? Why the space industry is important? It's because since we've been here on Earth, we are trying to, we're fighting over resources. And resources is actually what we have, it's, it was our limitation and still our limitation. Resources for water, resources for energy, resources for uh, mining, resources for gold, resources for everything. 
And when you are talking here about infinite universe, about infinite possibilities of other planets full of resources, they can be a backup for our Earth. Especially now when we are facing a lack of resources, not only talking about oil and gas, but also we say, uh, we're, we're facing climate change problem affecting, affecting the production of plants and the food, actually food safety and food security for us as a human. So why we won't think about other planets that could provide this food security, could, could be a resource for us, for all the resources that we are working on, especially that some of the material, as a chemical engineer again, <laughs> Some of the material that can be produced on Earth, uh, like they uh, they have the uh, their their production on Earth uh, uh, on Earth is high, high cost. They can be produced out of Earth on other planets or on the International Space Station, with more efficient mechanical properties and more efficient properties and more efficient applications for us as a human being. Uh, because of the environment of the space, the microgravity and the low pressure thing and all of that. So, and, and these things that we use like literally every day, like uh, crystallization. Crystallization, it has a different process in microgravity than it does on earth. So this is, we're talking here about another environment and another resource that we have to take advantage of as a human being. Yeah. Um, when you think about the future of humanity, let's say 200 years in the future, uh, mm. what does it look like to you? Uh, talking about space industry or talking in general? Um, both. Both. Uh, oh, it's a good question. I haven't thought about it before. <laughs> talking about humanity 200 years later. I believe like, yeah, there, there, there will be the technology development and the AI and all of that. Probably like one of the, you have to be affected by science fiction movies when you answer such a question, like flying cars and all of that. But like 200 years from now, I would expect that, uh, flying to International Space Station or another planet would be something available for everyone. Hmm. And um, do you think we have people living on Mars in 200 years? People living on Mars? Yeah, I think, yeah, they, they, they won't be living. They will be there for doing certain, like specific missions, again, to use their resources or for, for, the, for our main aim. And they will come back, but they won't be living there forever, like spending their lives there. Do you think at some point we do have people living other places besides Earth? Other people than us as a human being? or <laughs> Oh, no, other places. Uh, so uh, humans, humans oh. living other places besides the Earth. Do you think there will be some point where, where that happens? Yeah, why not? I don't think my grand grand grandfather have ever thought that human would be standing on moon one day. So why do I am to assume that we're not going to be living on another planet? So yeah, why not? Sure. Now I'd like to take that two hundred year question and turn it around on you. Uh, let's say that instead of you living in twenty twenty two, you live in twenty two twenty two. So you live two hundred years in the future. And uh, for some reason, you're thinking back to the 2020s. Mm -hmm. What do you think could happen in this decade that would be worth remembering in 200 years? I think humans are being open to each other and to all information in a way that they will, that have never happened before. And it's a peak point in human, let's, in human history. It will be a big peak point in human history because it will be combination not only of our knowledge, but of AI knowledge. And I think, yeah, it will be a point where we will say like in 2022, that thing happened. So yeah. 
and where AI became um, a lot more useful and powerful? A lot more useful and powerful and a lot of more like ideas generator. So you will not, as a human being, we will not be thinking alone. Like there will be some machine helping you do, during this process. So yeah, I think this combination have not happened yet, but I think it will happen in the couple next years. So yeah, I think in 200 years, it will be a peak point. Hmm. Um, would you take a trip to space if you could? Yeah, sure. <laughs> How, yes, how far would you go just to orbit? Would you take a trip to Mars? Uh, would you go to the moon? What would you do? I wouldn't go farther than moon, actually. It could be International Space Station. I would spend a week there. <laughs> and I would go to the moon, yeah, sure. But do I, have, I, I don't think I will go further. Do you have uh, some ideas of things that you would want to do if you were on the International Space Station? If I'm on the International Space Station. Would you <laughs> look out the window or do you have some experiments you want to do or, you know, would you do some gymnastics? I, I mean, like, do you have some thoughts? Yeah, sure. You would like, out of, I would like to sit out next to the window and point out like, here where I came from. <laughs> Everything looks so small from up there. Uh, uh, yeah, if there's a kind of experiment, I, I don't know. I think everything uh, in International Space Station is an experience. Even trying to breathe and drinking water is an experiment itself. So that there's nothing specific. The experience itself could be considered as scientific experiment. Uh, anything on the moon you would do? Like, um, you know, I, I know uh, one of the astronauts bought some golf balls and, you know, hit a, hit a golf ball on the moon. But, uh, <laughs> I would like to try a yoga position. <laughs> yeah, that, that one thing I would try to do on the moon. That'd be pretty neat. Well, uh, Lana, those were the questions I had for you, but uh, did you have uh, any questions for me or anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, actually, I would like to know more about how you are related to space industry and what do you do and how our answers would affect what you're actually doing. Well, I should give you a little context for this project. So back in 2019, when they announced us going back to the moon, the plan was to have us land on the moon in 2024. Mm -hmm. And there was this NASA um, assistant administrator uh, who was in charge of getting us to the moon by 2024. And in order to kind of keep everybody focused on that date, he had like a little lapel pin that he went wore that had the number of days to the end of 2024 on it. And he would yeah. count down those days. And he was going around NASA and highlighting a NASA person that was helping us get there. And so, you know, at that time I was working from home and I would, really liked space. And I thought, hey, I'll start this project of asking uh, anybody I could ask, uh, you know, these questions. So uh, starting in December of 2019, I've interviewed a person every single day and I'm going to the end of 2024. But I had been working at like um, Hewlett Packard and then at a software company. And so for 25 years, I was in like um, IT uh, technology and Anyway, my kids uh, went off to college and I was like, now is the time for me to go and um, be part of space. So last year I applied for a, a position at NASA to work in the mission control um, to support the International Space Station. So uh, doing the electrical power systems and the external thermal control systems. And so that's what I'm currently doing. But uh, this project this project is completely unrelated to that. This is just my personal project. It's incredible. I love the career switch. <laughs> it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, most of the people who do this uh, do it directly out of college. So I'm kind of a little older than yeah. most people. But it's okay. It's not, you're not a little older. You're there with more experience. <laughs> That's true. So, 
It's amazing. Thank you, Nathan, for such opportunity. And I'm sure that your project will turn out to be an amazing project, an outstanding, outstanding one. Thank you a lot. Well, I do have over 700 more days to go. So if you have friends and family that would be willing to participate, maybe you yeah, could. Yeah, uh... sure. I will send the link for everyone I know. I post it on my Instagram. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Nathan, for this opportunity. More than grateful. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.